This shoe is sneaker of the year. There, I said it. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Found. There's been a lot of really strong sneaker releases this year. There's been a lot of great new tech, there's been exciting new designs, and there's even been some really solid retros. However, none of those sneakers have the story or the looks or the history that this sneaker has. In my opinion, this sneaker is the full package and that's why it's the best sneaker of the year so far. For the last year and a half since we heard that we might be getting a retro of the Chicago Air Jordan 1s, I've been heavily anticipating this shoe. In fact, this shoe has been number one on my list of my most anticipated sneakers of 2022. I've been waiting for this shoe for a long time. I mean, realistically since the last Chicago release back in 2015. And man, I've gotta say, this shoe does not disappoint. This shoe absolutely lives up to the hype. Now after gassing this shoe up for the last couple minutes, I'm sure you're wondering how you can get your hands on a pair of Air Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Founds. Well, originally this shoe was supposed to release at the end of October. However, Jordan brand has since pushed back the release date to November 19th, 2022. And unfortunately, because this shoe is a special edition or maybe even a more premium version of the Air Jordan 1s, it does come with a slightly higher retail price of 180 bucks. The good thing is though, this shoe is absolutely worth that price. Unfortunately for me though, that's not the amount that I paid. I grabbed my pair on GOAT because they had a pair on instant ship for an amount that I'm honestly kind of embarrassed to say, so I'm not going to. And I did accidentally buy two pairs, so now I have an extra pair, which I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with yet. I may give it away, so if you guys are interested in possibly winning a pair of these for yourself, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, because if I do give it away, I will announce it on the channel. Also, if you're crazy like me and you want to grab a pair of these early, I've made sure to leave an affiliate link to GOAT in the top of the description below. As much as I love this shoe, the amount that I paid was was probably not worth it. Before we get into the sneaker though, let's first take a look at the box because the packaging is one of the reasons why this sneaker is so great. So obviously, because this is a special edition release, Jordan Brand did decide to change things up pretty dramatically on the box and on the packaging. So there are two things that will immediately catch your eye about this box. The first is that the box top and the box are mismatched. And the second is that the way that Jordan Brand printed the design on the box, it gives this box a very old and distressed look, which I absolutely love. And the reason for these changes is actually the story or the inspiration behind this entire package. And that's that this box and even shoe is designed to look like it's been lost in storage in the basement of a mom and pop shop for the last 30 plus years. Hence the name Lost and Found. From what I've heard, the design of the sneaker and the design of the packaging is meant to pay homage to the mom and pop shops of the 80s and the 90s. Unfortunately, mom and pop shops are not as prevalent as they once were. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Jordan Brand is no longer sending stock to mom and pop shops because they're trying to sell more online because they have much better margins, but that's neither here nor there. So like I said, the idea behind this shoe was that this was an Air Jordan 1 that went on sale back in the 80s and then it was lost in storage. They didn't even have an original Air Jordan 1 box top to throw on this Air Jordan 1 Chicago box, so they used a random Nike box top. And the whole idea behind this sneaker and the story behind this shoe is really, really interesting and I love it. On the front of the box, there is actually a really cool set of sales stickers to let you know that this shoe went on sale. But unfortunately, because I bought this pair from GOAT, they decided to cover up that detail with their GOAT sticker, which sucks, but uh, at least you can still sort of see the outline of the sales stickers, so. There's that. In addition to those sales stickers, you also have the size tag. As you can see, I grabbed a size nine, which is my true size. And the official colorway of this shoe is Varsity Red Black Sail Muslin. Before we move on from the box, I do wanna show you guys some other really cool details that can be found inside. And the first is this really cool receipt that's designed to look like an old 80s mom and pop shop receipt. Now the first thing I noticed about this receipt was actually the price paid for this pair of sneakers. And that price was $14.99, which sounds crazy now, but back in August 30th of 1986, it wasn't too insane for a pair of sneakers that was on sale. The receipt says Air Jordan basketball shoes paid cash final sale received by Leah N. Another interesting detail is that the name of the mom and pop shop Sandy Bros is actually a nod to some of the designers of the Air Jordan 1. And then the other detail that I love inside the box is actually the paper. So the paper is designed to look like old Jordan ads. In fact, I think they might have actually taken old Jordan ads, collaged them together, and then printed them on the paper. And it's a really, really cool detail. I absolutely love it. Oh, also one other detail I wanted to mention is that inside the shoes when you first get them, they don't come with a cardboard insert, instead they come with just paper. Which in my opinion is just something good to know if you're buying these sneakers in the aftermarket and you want to legit check your shoes. If they have cardboard in them, they're not legit. But now let's get back to the sneakers themselves, my most anticipated shoe of 2022. I can't believe I'm holding these, it's crazy. So first things first, this shoe is a Chicago Air Jordan 1, the original colorway of the Air Jordan 1s, the first released back in 1985. Now I guess technically this shoe isn't really a true retro of the Air Jordan 1 Chicago's. It's not like the 2015 pair that was just a re-release of 
the original. This shoe has a new story behind it. It's a little bit aged. It's got some cracked leather. The story behind this shoe is a little bit deeper than a standard pair of Chicago's. And because of that, I'm not sure if this is like the next Chicago retro that we're going to get or if we're going to get one two years down the road that's much more standard than this pair. Speaking of retros of Chicago ones, I do have the 2015 pair right here just to compare for you guys to give you guys a quick overview of how these shoes differ. So as you may be able to tell, the shape of these two shoes is a little bit different. It seems like the 2015 pair is ever so slightly higher than the newer version of the shoe. There is definitely differences in the leather on the 2015 pair. You do have a lot of tumbled leather. It's a pretty standard Air Jordan 1, whereas on the 2022 Lost and Founds, you do have a lot of cracked leather, which we'll get into later on in the video. And then the red leather is much more stiff, a lot more similar to the 1985 versions of the shoe, or the recently released 1985 versions of the shoe. The shades of red are very similar between these two shoes. However, on the 2015 pair, the white panels and the white areas on the shoe are very bright white, whereas on this newer 2020 22 lost and found version of the shoe, the white portions of the shoe actually come in a much more cream or off-white color. From a distance, they are very similar looking shoes. I mean, the colorway is the same, the silhouette is very similar, but when you start looking at these shoes up close, you do notice a lot of differences. But now let's dive a little bit deeper into the materials that make up the lost and found Air Jordan 1s. So around the toe of the sneaker on the mud guard, you've got this really nice deep Chicago red leather. And like I was saying earlier, the leather used on the red panels of the shoe is much more similar to the leather used on the recently released 1985 versions of the shoe. It's a little bit stiffer, it's not really tumbled, and it actually much more closely resembles the leather used on the original release of the shoe. And I actually think it's a pretty decent leather, especially for a $180 shoe. It's not the best leather in the world, but it's definitely a step up from really any of the leather that we've had on recent Air Jordan 1s. It also smells really good too. It smells like a leather shop. It's crazy. I love it. Moving up from the red leather panels, you've got this cracked sail colored leather on the toe. Now, I'm not usually the biggest fan of cracked leather. I've said that in my Ama Manier Air Jordan reviews because a lot of those shoes feature cracked leather. And the reason for that is because over time, I found that cracked leather literally cracks off and almost looks like shoe dandruff. It's kind of gross. But what's nice about this is that this leather doesn't seem to be overly cracked to where it will start peeling off very quickly. And also, it really fits with the story of the shoe because this is what this leather would be doing after 30 plus years. And also, like I mentioned before, this panel is not a true white, but instead is much more of a sail color. Again, to mimic the aging of a pair of shoes that would have been sat in storage for 30 plus years. Continuing up even farther on the shoe, you've got more of these red leather panels on the eye stay of the sneaker, and then weaving through the eye stay, at least when you first get the shoe, you've got a set of white laces and a set of black laces pre-started in the sneaker. Now, one of the interesting details about this release is that unlike standard Air Jordan 1 or recent Air Jordan 1 releases, you don't have lace bags. Instead, the two sets of laces are actually woven through the bottom two eyelets of the sneaker, which I'm assuming is a callback to the original releases of the shoe. As you can see, the shoe comes with a set of white laces and a set of black laces, and I decided to just go with the black laces because that's what I usually wear with my Chicago's. Then underneath the laces, you've got this sail-colored nylon Air Jordan 1 tongue, which I'm sure is designed to look aged. At the top of the tongue, you've got this red tag with the Nike Air logo embroidered into it in white. And another difference that I noticed between this pair and the 2015 pair is that the font of the Air Tech seems to be a little bit thinner on this pair, which I'm assuming again is designed to look like the originals. Then moving inside the sneaker, you've got this black fabric sock liner, which is pretty standard for Air Jordan 1s and is also pretty well padded, which I appreciate. And then rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got a white insole with the Nike Air branding printed on the heel in red. One other detail that I thought would be kind of interesting to mention and to show is the tag inside the sneaker. Now what's interesting about this tag is that it actually shows you the dates that this sneaker was manufactured. And according to the tag, it looks like these Air Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Founds were manufactured between February 23rd, 2022 and May 18th, 2022. Which is actually a little bit earlier than I would have expected. I guess it makes sense with the original October release date, and it also makes sense as to why you can grab pairs of these early on GOAT and at sneaker events and places like that. But I am honestly kind of surprised. I would have thought that there would have been more leaked images of this shoe by now, but there isn't. But now let's get into sizing and fit, which I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about. So in my opinion, the shape of this silhouette is kind of a mix between the recent Air Jordan 1 releases and the recent Air Jordan 1 1985s. It's kind of got that straighter heel line that you find on the 1985 pairs, but it's also still got that sort of hunched forward look from the newer pairs. It really seems like a mix of both. I'm not sure exactly why they didn't decide to go one way or the other, but it is what it is. Either way, the good news is this shoe does seem to fit true to size and just like every other pair of Air Jordan 1s. However, as I always say, if you don't already own a pair of Air Jordan 1s, 
ones. I do suggest trying on a pair in your local Foot Locker or something like that. It does not have to be this colorway, just to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you, especially if you're grabbing this shoe for resale. Also, I don't know if you peeped the fire socks in the on-foot portion of this video, but those socks are from my sock brand, Apothecary. At Apothecary, we create your sneaker's favorite socks. They're incredibly comfortable, they come in a bunch of different colors, and they look great with all of your sneakers. So, if you want to try out a pair of your sneaker's new favorite socks, make sure to click the link to Apothecary's website in the description below. Continuing back on the sneaker to the midfoot, you get to another sail-colored cracked leather panel. And of course, landing in the center of this panel, you've got this black leather Nike swoosh. Moving towards the heel of the shoe, you've got more of these red leather panels, and then on the lateral side of the sneaker, you've got the Wings logo in matte black. Now what's interesting about this Wings logo is that unlike with standard Air Jordan 1s or more recent Air Jordan 1s, this logo isn't debossed into the material and then filled with sort of a glossy paint. Instead, this Wings logo is much more similar to the original Air Jordan 1s and the Air Jordan 185s in that it's embossed outward and then painted with the matte paint. I actually much prefer this treatment. I know it's just really a reversed version of what we usually get, but I just think it looks clean on the shoe. Then moving around to the top of the ankle collar, you've got this glossy black cracked leather. Now unlike with the white cracked leather, this black cracked leather actually allows you to see through to the leather underneath. In this case, the leather has sort of a light brown or tan color, which gives this heel area a bit more of a distressed look. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw images of this shoe, I was mad that they did this detail. I felt like it was unnecessary, there was too much going on. But now that I understand the story of this shoe, while I don't love this detail visually, I really do think it does add to the story of the shoe. And if they hadn't done this, it wouldn't have really fit with the whole aesthetic. Then moving down on the shoe, you get to your standard Air Jordan 1 midsole. However, this time around, it doesn't come in a bright white and instead comes in sort of a cream colored sail. It's actually a slightly more aged color than the leather found in the upper of the shoe, which makes sense because rubber does usually yellow faster than leather. And then finally getting to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this red rubber outsole, which seems to be sort of marbled with this kind of light gray color, which does give the bottom of the shoe sort of a dusty or old look, which again, really ties in well with the story. I meant what I said at the beginning of this review. This shoe for me is sneaker of the year. I don't see any other release even coming close to this shoe. And hey, maybe I'm biased. Maybe I love this shoe because the Air Jordan 1 is my favorite sneaker of all time. And the Chicago colorway, while I don't love it as much as the bread Air Jordan 1s, is right up there with it. So yes, maybe I'm biased. But you have to admit that the story behind this sneaker, the packaging, and all the little details that went into this shoe really make this one of the best all-around sneaker releases of the entire year. This sneaker is straight fire, and in my opinion, it deserves all the hype that it gets. Unfortunately, because this shoe is going to be so hyped up, I'm sure it's it's gonna be very difficult to grab a pair of these for retail, and the resale price of this shoe is probably going to be stupid. So just keep that in mind. If you want a pair of these, just stay on top of all the release information and uh, enter all the raffles you can. That's all the advice I can give you. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on this shoe, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.